What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Mayolari. So I did a podcast over the summer that I started last year. I started a podcast with my friend Zach. We still have our radio show, The Playbook with Joey and Zach, on WZBC AM Sports Radio. Over the summer, I was looking for something to do, and I kept my podcast going. I did my own over the summer, talking everything baseball, NBA, NFL season previews. Did a ton of episodes, and now I will be back in the studio doing it live rather than just a recorded version of it, just uploaded online. This will be a live show once again, just like it was last year. So I'll have a couple of shows now. I'll have my show, the Primetime Sports Podcast. It'll be Tuesday night, 7, 8 o'clock. And then the Playbook with Joey and Zach will be 8 to 9 on Wednesday night. So a double header, I guess, back-to-back days there. Uh, but very excited to give you guys another hour of the world of sports. I'm going to start off with some college hockey, and then I'm going to get into stuff with the Red Sox. I might make it into two episodes, technically, just so... The college hockey season preview is just one episode on its own. So to start off, Northeast and the Huskies, 25-13 and one last season, 15-8 and one in the Hockey East. They lost in the regional round of the Frozen Four tournament against Western Michigan. They do open up the season tomorrow night, October 1st, versus Long Island at 7.30 p.m. at Matthews Arena. Northeast starts the season actually with six straight home games. So doesn't really happen very often you start the season with six home games. So I think it'd be different, obviously, for Northeast, but I think you can play to their advantage being at home six times with the, with the Matthews Arena crowd. Obviously, the Doghouse, one of the best fan bases in all of college hockey. Very excited to see them at it again tomorrow night. As I said, big game tomorrow night, 7.30 versus Long Island. So in those first six home games, four of those will be against Hockey East teams, two of them versus Vermont, Providence, and UMass Lowell. Northeastern was 14-5-1 at Matthews Arena last year in 2021. So you got to like their odds in these first six games. Hopefully go 4-2, and 5-1. and one. I'll take it in any of those. They do have an out-of-conference game with BC in that first six games. They do play BC four times. Three of them are Hockey East games. One of them will be an out-of-conference game. But very excited to see them play BC four times this year. They also have an out-of-conference game with Long Island twice. So they'll play Long Island to start the season. They play them a little bit later on in the season. They play Union as an out-of-conference game. Sacred Hot, Bentley, and Harvard. That's Northeastern's out-of-conference games on the year. They also play Western Michigan as well. Uh, they might have a couple others in there. I just noted a few big out-of-conference games. So for some key games now, I'm going to highlight a few of them. So Tuesday, October 18th, at home versus BC. That'll be a big game. Obviously, as I said, four games versus BC. I go to BC, obviously, and I'm a BC hockey fan too, but I'm a big, big Northeastern hockey fan. Nothing appears to my how much I love Northeastern hockey in the world of college sports and my favorite college sports team. So They'll play BC Tuesday, October 18th at home at Matthews Arena. November 18th and November 19th, they play a home-and-home versus BU. That'll be a great game. Obviously, BU gave Northeastern some battles last year. Northeastern won a couple of those games in November against them before BU really got hot. Northeastern did beat them. I remember an overtime game. Aiden McDonough had a huge goal. I think he had two goals in that game in November to beat the BU Huskies at Aganis Arena. So hopefully... Uh, the luck stays hot for Northeastern when they're playing BU again this year. November 25th versus Western Michigan in Nashville. That's a big game. That's a regional round matchup that Northeast obviously lost last year to Western Michigan, a 2-1 game, I believe, at the top of my head. Lost that game 2-1 in the Frozen Four tournament. Now they get a rematch versus them November 25th in Nashville. Sunday, January 1st at Harvard. Harvard gave Northeast a good game last year. Northeast actually beat them. It was a weekday game. I believe it was a Tuesday game or Monday night game. Monday night game at Matthews Arena early in the year last year. Gunnar Wolf Fontaine went down the ice, had a breakaway in overtime and won Northeast in the game. Obviously, three on three OT. There's going to be some breakaways and a play to Northeast in the advantage there with, honestly, Gunnar Wolf Fontaine obviously getting the goal, huge goal there for Northeastern. They played January 7th, a Frozen Four, a Frozen Fenway, excuse me, a Frozen Fenway matchup versus UConn. Very good game. Once again, another matchup for Northeastern that they played against in the playoffs last year. They played. UConn in the semifinals of the Hockey East last year. Tough game for Northeast. They end up losing that game. But they'll get another chance to play them this time. A big stage, obviously. The Frozen Fenway matchup's always a good one. Then they play Monday, February 6th versus BU at 8 o'clock. The Beanpot semifinals game. That'll be the second semifinals game of the day. BC Harvard at 5.30. And then BU Northeastern at 8 o'clock. According to the United States College Hockey Organization, the poll they put out to rank every team in the nation... Northeastern was ranked 8th in their first one. I believe they're ninth right now in their second one. They are number one out of Hockey East teams 
according to the coaches poll in the Hockey East, so that's very exciting. And if you look at Northeastern schedule, nine of the first 15 games are at Matthews Arena. So as I said, they were very good at Matthews Arena last year, 14-5-1. Start the season with nine of their first games, nine of their first 15 games at Matthews Arena. That'll be very exciting before going on the road to play Western Michigan and Nashville for an NCAA regional rematch from 2021. Or it was 2022, actually. This was in March of 2022, so not too long ago. So, Northeastern, if you look at it, they'll be playing Western Michigan again. That's probably their biggest game. I'd say Western Michigan, probably the biggest opponent. Western Michigan lost their best player, Ethan Frank. I talked about him a ton last year on my radio show at BC, here live in the studio. I was a big fan of him last year. He had a great season. He actually led all of college hockey last year in goals with 26 goals. He's now in the AHL, so... Western Michigan will not have him on the ice. He won't be out there for them. So that'll definitely help Northeastern. But as for Northeastern, they did lose some key players as well, though. Defenseman Jordan Harris, the high and soul of Northeastern hockey over the last four years. Northeastern will be without him this season. He went to the Montreal Canadiens at the end of last season. Played very well for Northeastern last year as a senior. Five goals, 15 assists, 20 points in 39 games last year with a team lead of 69 blocks. Team leading, 69 blocks. So very impressive year for Jordan Harris defensively. And then obviously what he gives you on the ice minutes-wise. That guy chews minutes. Chews minutes. It's like he sits for one and a half shifts. Every other defenseman sits two, three shifts sometimes. He sits one and a half shifts and he's right back out there. Penalty kill, he doesn't take a second off. Jordan Harris was the high and soul of that Northeastern team. It'll definitely be tough not seeing him out there for Northeastern. Since I was very excited, he came back for his senior year. I was honestly a little bit surprised. But I was happy he came back for a senior year. He was the captain last year, and obviously now without him, it definitely will be a different Northeastern team this year without him. As for other losses for Northeastern, they also lost defenseman Tommy Miller. He signed to the Toronto Maple Leafs, was second on the team in blocks last year with 58. They also lost goalie, who was a freshman last year, TJ Semptonfelter. He transferred to Arizona State. Northeastern actually lost a couple guys to Arizona State. He had a 4-3 and record in net last year with a 2 5 2.05 goals allowed per game average. He was also great in the net save percentage-wise. 93.4% of shots faced he saved. So a great season last year for TJ as a freshman. Tough to see him go, but it makes sense. De- Devin Levi coming back. TJ wants to play. He deserves to play. He's that good. He should be playing and starting somewhere, and he will be getting his chance at Arizona State this year. Northeastern lost a couple other guys to Arizona State. The Jackson Twins, Dylan and Ty Jackson, Both forwards transferring from Northeastern after their sophomore season. Now they're juniors, actually. Juniors now, which is crazy to think. They're juniors now at Arizona State. Time really flies because I remember when they were freshmen, they were lighting it up right away on the same line. Then injuries happened last year to Dylan early in the season. Ty got a little banged up towards the end of his career with the Huskies. Now both of them are going to Arizona State to join TJ Sempdenfelder. So Semp and the Jacksons, both of them will be getting quality time for that Arizona State team. Last year, Ty Jackson was actually fifth on the Northeastern team in points. Six goals, 14 assists, and 20 points on the year. So fifth in points total with 20. Northeastern also lost another defenseman, Julian Kisslin. He was a senior last year. Another guy that chewed minutes for Northeastern. One of the most sound defensemen I've ever seen playing college hockey. And I mentioned last year, right before one of the games I went to, his first goal was against UMass Lowell last year in February. I remember mentioning... To my buddy Mark Walsh at Northeastern, shout out Mark Walsh Music. I mentioned to him that Kisslin never scored a goal in his first three years at Northeastern. And I mentioned right before this game, his fourth year, this was his fourth year at Northeastern. So one of his senior game days at UMass Lowell. I mentioned he's never scored a goal in college hockey yet. He's always a second line defense, second pair of defense because he's so good defensively. That you have to have him in the second pairing of defense because he's so sound out there defensively. And Lo and behold, he scored the first goal last year in that game. I said that, so I brought him some luck, thankfully. He will be transferring to Sacred Heart. And then also forward Steven Agrajanis. He will be transferring to Mercyhurst, so tough without Agro out there. Agrajanis was great as a freshman at Northeast in his first game. He actually lit it up, and then injuries happened last year, and he kind of fell out of the rotation a little bit. He will be transferring to Mercyhurst. And then Ryan St. Louis, the son of former NHL Hall of Famer Martin St. Louis, the current head coach, of the Montreal Canadiens. He will be playing in the USHL this year, and I think he will be returning to Northeastern, it seems like, next year in the fall of 2023. But with all those losses, Northeastern does have a lot coming back. They have Aiden McDonough coming back, senior forward, captain now for the Northeastern Huskies. He will be back 
with the Huskies next year. He was second in goals last year in the NCAA with 25. He had 14 assists in 39 points total. Senior forward Riley Hughes, two goals, 10 assists, and 12 points total last year for the Huskies. He'll be back as well. Junior goalie Devin Levi, 21 wins, 10 losses, and one tie last year on the year in net with a 1.54 goals against allowed average last year with a 95.2% save percentage. He will be back for Northeastern this year as a junior. Very excited to have him back in net for the Huskies, the best goalie in college hockey. He was also the Richter Award winner last year for the best goalie in college hockey. So very excited to see him back in a Huskies uniform. Junior forward Sam Colangelo, my favorite player on the team, will be back for the Huskies this year. I thought there was a chance he went, and I thought he'd go to the NHL and sign with the Anaheim Ducks. He'll be back with Northeastern this year. 12 goals and 15 assists and 27 points last year for the Huskies. He'll be back this year for the Huskies. Very excited to see him play tomorrow. Junior forward Gunnar Wolf Fontaine will be back with the Huskies yet again. Gunnar Wagon, I called him a lot last year. He's an absolute beast out there. Eight goals, 17 assists, 25 points last year. And then Northeast also has fifth year senior coming back. Forward Jakob Novak transferred in from Bentley a year ago now. Played his first year with Northeast and last year, and this will be his second year with the Huskies. Had a good year last year. Eight goals, nine assists, 17 points. Was typically on the second or third line with the Huskies, and that's great depth. If he's on the second or third line and he can be a first line for most teams, that just shows how deep Northeastern is. Senior defenseman Jaden Struble will be back as well. Had 23 blocks last year. Very sound defenseman as well. Does also have a great slap shot as well from the point. So hopefully he gets some opportunities this year to show his, his slap shot out there. And then forward, Justin Ritzkovian will be back as well. He is now a sophomore at Northeastern. 63% of his faceoffs he won last year as a freshman with 341 faceoff wins. Added 7 goals, 15 assists, and 22 points. So Northeastern, if you look at it, has their four top point scores from last year all returning. Aiden McDonough, Sam Colangelo, Gunnar Fontaine, and Justin Ritzkovi. Then you also have Jakob Novak coming back as well. Northeast is going to be a wagon in hockey this year. I'm very excited to see them play this year. I think they're, they're going to be doing big things. I said they're eighth right now in the college hockey poll in the rankings. Eighth or nine. I think they were eighth in the first week. Now they are ninth. And they also were picked number one in the Hockey East coaches poll. So I'm very excited to see them perform this year. I think they're going to be doing big things. Now I'm going to move on to BC Hockey. Tough year last year for BC Hockey. 15 wins, 18 losses, 5 ties. 9 wins, 12 losses, and 3 ties in the Hockey East. Jerry York retired during the beginning of the offseason, so not too long ago. So BC loses their legend of a Hockey East coach. Legend in all college sports, honestly, in coaching. One of the best coaches of all time in all college sports. Jerry York will be gone this year. He retired at the end of last season, I said. So this will be BC's first year without him. New head coach, Greg Brown. This is actually the fifth head coach for BC since 1932. He was a 14-year assistant coach for BC from 2004 to 2018. Was also the associate head coach when BC won the national title in 2012 under Jerry York. And he was also a three-year assistant coach for the New York Rangers from 2018 to 2021. So he brings a lot of college experience, 14 years with BC as an assistant coach. Then after being done at BC, coach for three years in the NHL. And now will be moving on going back to BC, and that will be their head coach this year. So very exciting to see him hopefully lead BC to a good season this year. BC did finish last season on a good note, won four of their last five games. They did lose in the quarterfinals matchup against Northeastern in the Hockey East quarterfinals last year at Matthews Arena. But BC in their last nine games last year finished the season hot. Five wins, three losses, and a tie. They finished the year better on a high note. This year, they have some out-of-conference matchups that are ones to look forward to, so I'm going to break down some of their schedule now. They put Notre Dame out of conference, Brown out of conference, Arizona State, December 30th and December 31st in Tempe, Arizona. That'll be a very exciting game. They will be playing against TJ Semdenfelter, who played great against BC in the Bean Pot, played BC in the semifinals of the Bean Pot this February, this past February, and he stoned them. Semp was unreal. 41 saves on 42 shots faced against BC in that semifinals game in the Bean Pots. So he'll get his chance to go against BC again this year, December 30th and December 31st in Tempe, Arizona. BC will be traveling there over winter break. He also played against BC on February 18th and 19th with 47 saves on 52 shots faced in those two games. So Semp, I'm sure, is psyched to be playing against BC again. 
And then BC will also be playing Sacred Hot out of conference. Some key games that BC look forward to. They open up the season Friday, October 7th at home versus number 7 ranked team in the country, Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac has been a powerhouse over the last few years in college hockey, so I'm sure it'll be a great matchup. A good way for BC to start the season. If they start the season on a high note and beat Quinnipiac, the sky's the limit. If you beat Quinnipiac to start the year, everyone's going to be thrilled, especially considering the hockey team really is a team that is a mystery this year. New head coach, you don't know how good they're going to be. Everyone knows the football team's struggling right now. Everyone knows the basketball team is going to be better this year. They were even better at the end of last season. So I think hockey could get a lot of their fans back. It's not like they lost a lot, but at the end of last season, they were struggling. It was tough to get a lot of people to games. I think this year, if we start with a win against Quinnipiac, it'll definitely get the student section, everyone going very early on. Just like last year, BC beat Denver, who beat the... the BC beat Denver, who actually won the national title last year. So obviously, if BC starts the year on a high note, beats Quinnipiac, it's going to get everyone going right away. Another game for BC to look forward to is Friday, November 25th at home versus Notre Dame. As I said, December 30th and 31st versus Arizona State at Arizona State. Saturday, January 7th, they will be playing against UMass at Frozen Fenway at 6 o'clock. So BC will be playing UMass, and then Northeastern will be playing UConn that day. So Northeastern, UConn, BC, UMass, two great games there. And then Monday, February 6th, 5 o'clock, BC will be playing Harvard in the semifinals of the bean pot. So very exciting there. So those are some key wins or some key games for Northeastern to look forward to and BC to look forward to. Now for some key losses for BC. They lost their best player last year, forward Mark McLaughlin. Ended up signing with the Bruins. Actually played well for the Bruins. Scored three goals, I believe, in a short stint in the NHL last year with the Bruins. After getting called up after leaving BC, signed to the Bruins and it worked out for him. It was great last year for BC. Team lead in goals with 21 goals, 10 assists, 31 points total. Forward Patrick Giles is also gone. 15 goals, 7 assists, and 22 points. Defenseman Drew Hellison, 4 goals, 21 assists, 25 points. Forward Jack McBain, 19 goals, 14 assists, 33 points last year. He'll be gone as well. And then also, goalie Eric Dopp is gone as well. And then forward Brandon Cruz is gone. And then obviously, head coach Jerry York is gone as well. So, BC's lost a ton, and also defenseman Jack St. Ivany. He is gone as well. Four goals, 20 assists, and 24 points last year for the Eagles. So losing McBain, McLaughlin, and Giles, that's BC's top three goal scorers last year. So BC obviously lost a ton of talent, and it'll definitely be tough for them this year to adjust. But they do have a lot of guys coming in that are good. Grad transfer goalie Mitch Benson, a transfer from Colgate, coming in with a 2.33 goals against allowed last year at Colgate with a 92.2% save percentage. Freshman forward Cutter Goudier, 34 goals, 31 assists, and 65 points for the U.S. U18 team last year in the 2021-2022 season. He was the fifth overall pick in the 2022 NHL draft by the Flyers. And then also the key returners. Senior captain defenseman Marshall Warren, 6 goals, 15 assists, 21 points last year for the Eagles. Career high in all three of them. He actually tied his career high in goals from his freshman season with six, but a career high in assists and points with 21 points and 15 assists. And then also junior forward Nikita Nestorenko will be back and junior defenseman Eamon Powell will be back as well. So should be a good year for BC. Definitely will be a good year, better year than they had last year. And hopefully they finish what they started last year, end of the season, a high note. Hopefully they continue where they left off. So now I'm going to transfer into a different division in college hockey. Now I'm going to shift over to the Atlantic Hockey Division, and I'm going to talk about one of my other favorite teams in college hockey. It's Northeastern, then AIC, then BC, my favorite teams in college hockey. AIC, 22-13-3 record last year with a 17-7-2 record in the Atlantic Hockey Division last year. AIC has actually won four straight seasons in the Atlantic Hockey regular season title. They've won four straight seasons being the regular season champion in that division. They actually won the Atlantic Hockey Tournament as well. Three out of the last three tournaments. It was not a tournament in 2020 due to COVID. So they won three out of the last three tournaments. That's three guaranteed tickets punched to the Frozen Four Tournament. If you win your divisional tournament, it's an automatic bid. If you win your conference tournament, you make it to the Frozen Four Tournament, just like it is in March Madness. So very exciting the last few years for AIC. I think they're going to have a great year this year as well. Last year, were the Atlantic Hockey regular season champions. Once again, four years in a row doing that, three years in a row winning the Atlantic Hockey Tournament. With so many players winning awards last year, getting recognition for how good they were. Forward Chris Theodore was actually player of the year in the Atlantic Hockey Division last year. Defenseman Zach Galambos was the best defenseman in the Atlantic Hockey Division. He won that award. 
And then forward Jake Stella won the best defensive forward award in the Atlantic Hockey Division last year. Goaltender Jake Kakoski won the goaltending champion award in the Atlantic Hockey Division last year. And then head coach Eric Lang was a coach of the year in the Atlantic Hockey Division last year. So a lot of awards there for that AIC Yellow Jackets team. They do lose a lot of talent this year, unfortunately. But I'm going to start off with who they have returning. Senior forward Blake Bennett, one of the most exciting Electric players in college hockey, one of the most underrated players in all college hockey, in my opinion. He was the Atlantic Hockey Tournament MVP last year. He finished a season with 20 goals, 14 assists, and 34 points in 37 games with eight power play goals. In the Atlantic Hockey Tournament last year, he had seven goals and three assists with 10 points in four games played, with two back to back hat tricks, actually, and also had nine goals and 12 points total in his last four games played last season, including two goals against Michigan in the Frozen Four Tournament. This kid is an electric hockey player and one of the most underrated players in college hockey. I'm very excited to see him do big things this year for that AIC team. I think he's going to be one of the best players in all college hockey. And I'm excited to be able to bring you guys a lot of coverage of that AIC hockey team this year on Tuesday nights, 7 to 8. I will be covering a lot of college hockey. So I'm excited to be talking college hockey, and I'm excited to give you guys updates on how the AIC, BC, and Northeastern seasons are going. Another guy returning for that AIC team is senior defenseman Brett Callahan. Was a great defenseman last year for that AIC team. Now he's a senior, so more experienced, just like Blake Bennett. Two goals, six assists, eight points in 25 games played last year. With two power play goals and a plus nine rating with one game-winning goal for Callahan last year. Very good year for him last year. I'm excited to see him do big things for that Yellow Jackets team as well this year. Defenseman Nico Somerville is also returning. He was now a junior at AIC. One goal, four assists, five points with a plus seven rating last year. And another player who is a very sound player as well, junior defenseman Brian Kramer will be returning to AIC this year. Three goals, eight assists, 11 points with a plus 16 rating, which is actually third best on the entire AIC team last year. He will be returning. As for key additions, freshman forward Grayson Dietrich, 17 goals, 28 assists, 45 points in the Alberta Junior Hockey League last year. 11 incoming freshmen for the AIC hockey team this year, so it's a young team. But as I said, they do have some returning vets in Blake Bennett and Brett Callahan. In addition to that, they also have freshman Josh Bonds coming in, 11 goals, 9 assists, and 20 points in the USHL last year. As for losses, though, they lost a ton. Chris Dodero, forward, great player last year, 13 goals, 16 assists, 29 points. They lost him. Forward Brian Regali is gone as well. Regali played great last year. 12 goals, 14 assists, 26 points. Defenseman Zach Lambos blocked 66 shots last year. Was number one on the team in block shots. Transferred to Western Michigan. Actually led AIC in shots with 105 shots last season with five goals and 24 assists and 29 points total. Forward Chris Theodore leaving AIC as well. 10 goals, 19 assists, 29 points last year on the season for AIC. He will be transferring to Union this year. Forward Jake Stella, 12 goals, 16 assists, 28 points last year for that AIC team. One of my favorite players in college hockey last year. I love how he plays the game. He will be transferring to UMass Lowell. He is there right now. And then forward Eli uh, Bariga, transferred as well. Elijah Bariga, 9 goals, 15 assists, and 24 points. Led AIC in faceoff wins last year with 308. He is gone as well. I believe he graduated. Then forward Justin Young will be gone as well. 12 goals, 19 assists, 31 points, which is actually second most on the team in points with 31, and had a plus 18 rating last year, which was also second on the team. So very impressive year last year for Young. He graduated. So if you look at it, AIC lost six of their top seven goal scorers, lost eight of their top nine point scorers from last year. Very new team, very young team for the most part. If you look at it, they still got Lane coming back. Great head coach, one of the best coaches in college hockey, as you can tell. Won the Atlantic Hockey Coach of the Year Award last year, so obviously gets the recognition he deserves. Having Blake Bennett come back, one of the most electric players and talented players in all of college hockey. Brett Callahan, very sound defenseman. Very excited to see him do big things this year. He's going to be leading them on the defensive end this year with Nico Somerville. Very excited to see those guys help that AIC team, a young team, but I'm excited to see them do big things this year. They open up the season versus Alaska Fairbanks on Saturday. And then last year, if you look at it, they were 19-1-1 in the 2021-2022 season, one leading after two periods. So that just shows how great they are closing games when they're leading. They closed games very well last year. And then also, if you look at it, 
they just close out games. Even if they're losing, they come back too as well when they're when they're trailing. So they know how to finish a hockey game, whether they're up or down. They always play the game the right way as well. So I'm excited to see them do big things this year. Key games for that AIC team. Atlantic Hockey Season Opener versus Niagara on October 14th and October 15th. Home opener is next Saturday versus UMass October 8th. So not this coming Saturday, but next Saturday. They also play Lindenwood on October 22nd and 23rd at home. Lindenwood lost their Division I program team in 1979. They were a club team for the last three or four decades, I believe. And they had a 22-3 record last year in the ACHA College Hockey Association. They actually won four ACHA championships, a very good team. They are now back as a Division I program. And then also ASC will be playing home versus UMass Lowell on January 7th. So very exciting games there. And now one thing I forgot to mention, so I mentioned all the losses for Northeastern. I didn't mention all the guys they have coming in, all their key additions. Freshman forward Cam Lund, second pick in the second round in the 2022 NHL draft. He will be at Northeastern this year. 34th overall selection in the 2022 NHL draft. Freshman defenseman Hunter McDonald, 6th round pick from this past year's draft, 165th overall to the Philadelphia Flyers in the 2022 NHL draft. He will be at Northeastern. Freshman defenseman Jackson Dorrington, 6th round pick, 176th overall to the Vancouver Canucks. He will be at Northeastern this year as well. Graduate student transfer from Merrimack, Liam Walsh, a forward, 22 goals, 27 assists and 49 points in 81 games played for Merrimack over his career. He will be at Northeastern this year as well. Shout out Mark Walsh, same name as Liam Walsh. Hopefully he gets his jersey if they're selling one tomorrow night. Sophomore transfer defenseman from BU, Braden Doyle, 6th round, 157th overall selection in the 2019 NHL draft to the LA Kings. He's a transfer from BU coming over to, do, to Northeastern now as a freshman or as a sophomore now. He transferred in as a freshman last year and now he's a sophomore at Northeastern. Freshman defenseman Vinny Borgesi is at Northeastern as well this year. And then also a freshman goalie who actually decommitted from BC and committed to Northeastern after the Jerry York retirement news. He is a goalie, Grant Riley, coming into Northeastern this year. Obviously, Devin Levi is a starter, but he might be the goalie for the future. So very exciting stuff there for that Northeastern team. Very excited to see how they play this year. BC plays in AIC. So now I'm going to give my predictions for who I think is going to win each division, each conference in college hockey. Atlantic Hockey Division, AIC all the way. Four straight years have won the regular season title. Three straight years winning the Atlantic Hockey Tournament. I think they do both again this year. Make it a fifth year in a row winning the regular season title and also winning the tournament as well for fourth straight year in a row. The Big Ten, I got Minnesota winning. In the CCHA, I have Bowling Green winning. A surprise over Minnesota State. I like Bowling Green this year. Very experienced team. Had a great team last year as well. Over the last few years, have really developed their program. I think they're going to have a really good year this year. The ECAC, I was between Harvard and Quinnipiac. I went with Quinnipiac. Honestly, a favorite there, but Quinnipiac always is a sound, strong, very well-rounded team. So I'm going with Quinnipiac there for the win. In the Hockey East, I got Northeastern winning. No surprise there. I think they win the Hockey East regular season title for a second straight year, and I think they win the Hockey East tournament this year as well. In the NCHC, I have Denver winning, reigning champions, but they did lose a lot of talent. They lost Carter Savoy, their best forward last year, and then also defenseman Bobby Brink. I think St. Cloud State will keep it close. I was very close to picking them, but I will go with Denver since I am a fan of Denver. I liked watching them last year in person. As for the Hoey Baker Award, I get Aiden McDonough winning it. I think last year he had a chance for a while and then got a little bit cold Goal scoring wise, I think this year is an electric year for Northeastern before graduating and going to the Vancouver Canucks. I think he has a great year this year. I would not be surprised. I said, though, keep your eye on Blake Bennett of AIC. He might not be up on many Hobie Baker watch lists right now. He is on mine. I consider him to be one of the best players in all college hockey. I see him putting up monster numbers this year for AIC. He's a guy to keep your eye on for uh, an award in college hockey this year. I think he could be up there for the Hobie Baker Award. As for my prediction for the Frozen Four Finals matchup, I got Northeastern over Minnesota in the Frozen Four Tournament. And then the Hockey East, I'm going to rank every team in the Hockey East according to what I think they're going to finish by. I got Northeastern in first, UMass Amherst in second, UMass Lowell in third, BU in fourth, BC in fifth, Providence in sixth, UConn in seventh, UNH in eighth, Merrimack in ninth, Maine in tenth, and Vermont in eleventh. So that wraps up. All of my college hockey news there. As I said, Northeastern starts this season tomorrow night, October 1st at Matthews Arena at 7.30. That's a season opener. It will also be AIC's first game of the season versus Alaska Anchorage. I believe it's No, it's Alaska 
Fairbanks, is it? Yes, Alaska Fairbanks. Tomorrow they will be opening up their season against Alaska Fairbanks. A big season to open up for that AIC team. And then BC will be opening their season next Saturday, October 8th. Big game for BC. And it'll be obviously any start of the season's big. But this, this game against Quinnipiac is going to be a huge game for BC. Or Friday, October 7th. I was wrong. The 7th. Next Friday, October 7th, BC versus Quinnipiac. Season opener. It's also the day before the BC Clemson game next Saturday, October 8th. So it'll be very exciting at BC those days. Friday night, BC Quinnipiac. And then Saturday night, BC versus Clemson. Anyways, thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it. I will be back on Tuesday night, 7 to 8 o'clock with the Primetime Sports Podcast. And then I also will be doing the same show I was doing last year with my friend Zach, The Playbook with Joey and Zach on WZBC AM Sports Radio. That'll be Wednesday nights, 8 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock Eastern time. So very excited for this year. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. I will be back on in just a minute to talk about the Red Sox and a couple other things, but I just want to make this one episode recording on its own, and then I will be uploading another one as well. So I'll be back on in a minute. Thank you guys as always. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a good one. Thank you.